Hi, I'm Matt for Learnable, and in this Jumpcast, I'm going to step you through three great features of Git and how you can use them in the Mac app source tree. If you ever made a code commit, but the commit was either really unhelpful, needed further information, or could have been laid out better? Have you ever made a series of commits, but a later one should have come before an earlier one? Or have you made a commit only to realize that a few more files should have been included with it? If you, like me, can answer yes to any of these questions, then this Jumpcast has the answers for you. Specifically, I'm going to take you through the ability to edit a commit message and how to reorder and squash commits. If you've only used SVN or CVS up until now, being able to do these things will likely seem either strange or even downright scary. But don't worry, seriously. When approached carefully, they're an essential tool in your software development arsenal and one which I really encourage you to get into to learn all about and use daily. So why source tree? A GUI app instead of the command line? Honestly, Git can be quite an intimidating tool, at least when you're getting used to it. But I don't want that to hold you back. So I'm using source tree to show you how easy these features are to use. Plus, using a graphical interface helps make learning that much simpler. So in today's Jumpcast, we're going to take an existing repository, one deliberately composed in a, in a rather neglectful manner, and clean it up. Here's what we'll do. Firstly, we'll clean up a commit message, ensuring that it has a good subject and body. Secondly, we'll then take a set of commits and put them in the right order, ensuring that when checked out, the changes are applied in the correct order. And thirdly, we'll then squash a few commits together, ones which logically didn't need to be made separately. All this from the comfort of the best Git GUI tool on the market, and one which is free, source tree. Okay, let's look at editing a commit. You can see here in source tree that I've got a commit which simply says more work. Sure, we could review the patch to see what was done, but the aim of a good commit message is to give the developer a quick understanding of why the change was done, as opposed to the what, and it should contain a summary and a short description about the things that changed. My aim here was to add in more details about the purpose of the, of the repository in the readme file, so I should have said that in the commit message and being quite explicit. So let's edit the commit message now and change that. Here in source tree, I've selected the commit which I want to edit. Clicking repository, then interactive rebase, which you find most of the way down, you can see listed the three commits which are able to be modified. To edit the commit message, I can either click edit message near the bottom, or right click the change set and click edit message in the pop-up. I'm gonna go with the right click approach now. Doing that pops up a window containing the current commit message. And I'll now change that to say something a little bit more specific, such as fleshed out the readme with more information about the purpose of the repository. Clicking OK, you can see the description has changed. However, until we click OK again, the change won't be made permanent. And before we make the changes permanent, let's work through the two other features in today's Jumpcast. Okay, let's hypothetically assume that the change with the commit message added Lipsum text, where I added five paragraphs of Lipsum text from Lipsum.com, should have come before the commit with the description added author. How would we go about reordering the two? I know this is a rather contrived example, but work with me on this. I've deliberately kept the repository simple so as not to distract from the features that we're learning. Using source tree, we can reorder them in two ways. Firstly, we can choose the commit we want to move and then click the up and down arrows next to the delete button. Or we can click and drag the commit we want to the position in the timeline where it should be. I'll use the arrow buttons for this example. Clicking on the required change set, I'll click the up arrow next to delete to move it after added lipsum text. As with adding the commit message, the change isn't yet permanent but I'll make it so after the next change. Okay, looking at change sets two and three, we can see that really, they could have been committed as one instead of two separate changes. By being able to squash a commit, we can join them together so that for all intents and purposes, we did commit it as one change originally. Let's do that now. Like the other features that we've looked at today, there's two ways to do this with source tree. We can either click squash with previous, which you find next to delete, or right click the change that we want and click squash with previous there. So I'll click the final change set, then click squash with previous at the bottom here and 
can see that in the list, the two changes have been grouped nicely together. Unlike the other changes though, we shouldn't stop here. The reason being is that Git, and by consequence source tree, can't automatically create a new commit message for you, because it doesn't know what you're thinking. So what it does is makes a new commit message by joining the existing two together, along with some extra summary information. You can see this when I click edit message. This really isn't good to leave as is. So I'll quickly change that to flash the readme file out further, and a nice description of added in the author and lip some information to help the user understand the project. With these steps all completed, we're now ready to make the changes permanent. So I'll click OK in the bottom right, and in just a few moments, Git's updated the commit history. Now, after we push the changes to our remote repository, anyone updating their copy will see the rather nicer, more professional looking set of changes which we've just pushed out, instead of, let's be fair, the rather sloppy ones which were there before. So there you have it. In under 10 minutes using source tree for Mac, we edited a commit message, took a set of commits and put them in the right order, and we squashed a few commits together, which logically didn't need to be made separately. And we did all this from the comfort of the best Git GUI tool around, source tree. I hope you've enjoyed this introduction to these three powerful yet essential features in Git. If you're new to Git, coming from SVN or CVS, I'm sure with time you'll see just how effective these features can be. But please remember, use them with care.